Mr. Henry Groover is on the telephone. He is known to many around the world as the prayer walker to the world. He has walked and prayed for cities and nations and souls in many nations. Years ago, he had a series of visions about a future war. His website is JoyfulSoundMinistries.com. It's always a pleasure and an honor to have Henry Groover on True News. Henry, how are you, my friend? I'm fine, Rick. How are you? We're doing quite well. Um, it's been a long time since I've talked to you, and um, uh, glad uh, that we were able to reach you. You're a man that, that stays on the road. You, <laughs> you, you really are a prayer walker. The, uh, the last time I tried to reach you was, was in late March or early April. We, we had uh, called a meeting of watchmen to gather here in, in Vero Beach at True News, and uh, we we invited uh, a number of men that have been on the forefront of warning the United States of America for many years to repent and to come back to God. We gathered them here in Vero Beach, Henry, for four days of private, closed-door conversations among these men. And, and I told them, I said, nothing is being recorded. No notes are being taken. I want you to speak from your heart. I want you to tell us. Share with all of us what you're hearing from the Holy Spirit. Uh, Henry, we, we tried to reach you, but I was told you were in Japan at that time. So I, wanted, I just want you to know that you were, um, you were sorely, sorely missed at that meeting. Everybody asked, why isn't Henry Groover here? And so I, I, I just want you to know we did invite. But you were in Japan. And uh, I want to ask you about, I want to ask you about Japan. What, what is going on right now? in the country of Japan. Well, exactly what you were reporting there is very true. I, I've walked in Japan. I've walked uh, last year, October, November, August, October, November, and then this year, Jan, uh, January, February, March, uh, in areas of Japan around the area of the Fukushima power plant, the Fukushima prefecture, and around Tokyo, and what you stated there about Tokyo, I, I can be an eyewitness of what you have stated about the danger of them evacuating Tokyo. Uh, the radiation without the meltdown already is of such a degree that when I was there in October and they were raking the leaves in the schoolyards uh, from the trees that had fallen off the, the leaves that had fallen from the trees, they had signs all over for the children not to play in the leaves at the trees uh, at the school or at home. And the people had protective gear on and were raking up the leaves, putting them in special bags uh, because of the radiation on the leaves. Now, that's, that's, you know, even now, that was even last October. And... Uh, here in this year, there are many, many, many that are leaving Honshu Island, leaving the Tokyo area, very fearful. I have been all over the prefecture of Fukushima. Fukushima prefecture is like what we would call like the state of Iowa. It's a state. They call it prefectures there. But uh, I have seen there in October uh, the apples on the ground, the oriental pears, the fruit laying all over under the trees in the grape arbors, never harvested. Uh, the rice and the vegetables not harvested. Nobody will buy it from that prefecture and that radius, that area. Uh, the farmers are really suffering. The people are suffering. and uh, But the Christians are the ones that are staying in there and jeopardizing their lives. And... Uh, it, it's beautiful to see in the sense of what Christians are doing and coming forward uh, for the, their people of Japan. Henry, are you talking about Japanese Christians or are you talking about missionaries? I'm talking Japanese Christians, and when I was there in August last year, uh, 13 different nations were represented in a Iwaki City uh, in the rescue mission of going down into the areas of, of heavy destruction and uh, going in there and bringing in free food and supplies and diapers and bottles and baby formula and uh, tents and blankets and, and 
gear, you know, for because the people keep going back to mourn. They keep going in there, and they have nothing left. They went up on the hillsides and the mountainsides and survived, only to come back to total destruction. Uh, Rick, we're looking at 250 miles of coastland utterly obliterated. 250 uh, miles. It covered five prefectures, that tsunami, and up in the upper area above Sendai, <clears throat> the, uh, the tsunami was over 107 feet high, coming at 500 miles an hour, hitting coastland. And uh, it just literally toppled all of the, the barriers that Japan has been building for years, 30-foot high barriers, Kind of like uh, jacks. I don't know if you remember playing jacks. You toss the sure. ball in the air and you pick up the little metal jack. Mm -hmm. They're kind of four or five pronged and uh, they're metal. And you played a game as a child with jacks. Girls mainly played it. But that was the design of these 60-ton, these, uh, 120,000 pound uh, objects that they molded out of concrete with reinforced concrete, and they stacked it 30 feet high from the floor of the sea over their ports and their coastal areas. They've been doing that for 35 years now. When that wave hit those, it toppled those, and many of those, it just knocked them over. It just obliterated those tidal waves, those tidal barriers. And uh, the, the force of, of this, the the waves alone, I saw 250-foot ships almost a half a mile inland uh, that it had carried, seagoing ships it had carried on the waves. And uh, so it's hard to imagine the destruction. How, how many miles inland? A half a mile inland. Wow. Uh, just literally driven by these powerful waves and this force. Uh, Henry, how, how many how many Japanese people are remaining in the the most heavily radiated zone? An alarming amount. Uh, that is is that's the only word I can use. The Japanese government keeps warning them, but they are they have been in such mourning. They've lost everything. They've lost their loved ones. They've lost. I met Japanese that lost every member of their family lost their entire business. I met mayors of two cities along there, not very far from the Fukushima power plant, uh, in the area of Sendai. I've been in Sendai. That were mayors of cities along there that were wealthy men, their factory, their family. You see, they were having a big mayor's convention in Tokyo when this earthquake and tsunami hit. So the mayors of these villages and these cities survived but their whole families, businesses, offices, and everything were wiped out. So, uh, so they're, they're, they're still, a year over a year later, they're still in a state of shock. They're still oh, they mourning. they are a total state of shock. Uh, and and they're, they're, in, they're in such shock that they remain in the, the zone of the, of the radiation. Yes, this is true. They, they, they kneel down. I have seen them kneeling down to the broken Buddhas. Uh, crying and repenting for not praying harder to Buddha. And there is no Buddhist priest there to minister to them. There are no monks there to minister to them. But thank God the Christians are there, and they're, they're showing kindness, and they're showing provisions to them and jeopardizing their lives. I was with a team, and uh, the radiation uh, went up to 15 I'm sorry, 14. And the brother who was over this team said to me, Henry, he said, uh, do you realize that 10 on this scale is life-threatening? He said, uh, we've we got to cancel the mission. And I said to him, I said, no, no way. I said, the God that created whatever we have developed and made all this radiation out of, and abused it, the same God knew, and as he says, no, nothing shall by any means hurt you. That same God is the God I worship, and I said, hold that, that meter up where people can see it. 
and he held it up, and I started walking around it, rebuking that radiation in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, commanded it to go back into that Daiichi uh, reactor. And you know, before our eyes, many witnesses, we saw it go to 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, all zeros. And the, the director of that outreach team said to me, he says, Henry, we need to keep you here. And I said, no, brother, you don't need to keep me here. You need to do what I have just shown you. You need to take your authority over this. For God has given to you that authority that nothing shall by any means hurt you. And every weapon or no weapon formed against you will prosper. And uh, he, he really took hold of that. And uh, the young people in that team took hold of it. And the next day they went right down into the area of Sendai near the Daiichi power plant, taking authority over that in the name of Jesus. Henry, and, for, for years I've always believed that, that in the last days we would see great signs and wonders being performed by the, the body of Christ and that uh, I... I Many years ago, the Lord showed me, I just saw visions of, of Christians walking into cities that had been hit with biological or chemical weapons and corpses uh, everywhere and, and bodies twitching. And, uh, but the Christians walking in under the authority and the, the name of Jesus Christ and laying hands uh, on the sick and they would recover. Have we, this this disaster in Fukushima, is this the beginning of that end time period for the church? Yes, I really believe it is. Uh, a, a vital sign of that is back in the 1400s, the shogun that ruled over the islands of Japan, uh, when he put out an edict that if you found one Christian family, the, the feudal lords and the samurais were to slaughter every Buddhist family a complete 360 degrees around that Christian family, as well as the Christian family. That threw such a fear across the islands of Japan that has literally prevailed to this very day. But in this event that God has allowed to happen, in this event, I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that that is being obliterated. The news of Japan is covering what these Christians are doing. They are parallel. Are, do you realize the five nuclear scientists that were willing to go into that plant when it was on fire and try and cool that down? Do you realize they were all five godly Christians? No, I did not know that. I read that in the paper in Tokyo, Japan. They were all Christians, and they testified over national television and said, if we lose our lives, our Savior and our God, Jesus Christ, said there is no greater love that man can have than to give his life for his friends. This was said on, on Japanese television? This was on Japanese television, brother, and it's, it, it is going across the islands of Japan and causing, because they could not get any Buddhist scientists to go in there. They had no promise of the future, you know. And these men went in and paralyzed, periled their lives for this. And God protected them. They didn't lose their life. But they say because of this, their lifespan will probably be drastically shortened. But, again, are we going to trust the Lord? Where are we at? Are you aware, Rick, that uh, 48 hours before the Sendai earthquake... The Japanese ambassador to the U.N. in Geneva, Switzerland, read the official stand of Japan against Israel and the Palestinian situation. Yes, I had heard that. I, I have full confirmations of that. And I stated that in October, in August last year at, the, at a seminary in Osaka, Japan, Antioch Seminary. What I didn't know was the mother of a man that is very highly favored to be the next prime minister of Japan. She was in that meeting, and she went 
the next morning flew to Tokyo, took the DVD of my presentation, almost two-hour presentation, and uh, scripturally and historically and all, why the, why the tsunami, the, the uh, Sendai earthquake, and the Daiichi power plant failure. And she took that and gave it to her son, member of the Diet. That's like the Senate mm -hmm. of the United States. They call it the Diet there and said, you need to watch this. He watched it two times that night after coming home from the diet. The next morning, he sent a dispatch to the prime minister and said, we need to have emergency meetings immediately. I was invited to go to the diet in October last year and pray for them. And they stated that they believed that the God of the Christians was truly the one that was angry for their coming against and ordering Israel to turn over Jerusalem for the capital of the Palestinians to go back to 1967 territories and cease building immediately in the West Bank. 48 hours to the minute later, that Sendai earthquake hit and that tsunami and it has shaken the diet. It has shaken the leaders of Japan down to their very core. And we are seeing a hand of God move mightily in Japan. It is, it is a beautiful thing that we're seeing in the spiritual side. In the natural side, it's very frightening and devastating. Henry, is, is Japan as a nation at the crossroads of ceasing to exist? Well... I believe they're at the crossroads regarding acknowledging the Lord. Uh, God is invading Japan. The number two uh, Sokagakai high priest has gloriously been saved. He's preaching all over Japan. He's in his mid-80s. Uh, he was gloriously saved. His daughter was gloriously saved, who's on Japanese television every week, one of the high socialites and movie star people of Japan very famous in Europe and all, uh, we are seeing uh, many, many, many come to the Lord. I was told personally by the, the Soka Gakkai number two high priest, former high priest, daughter, uh, that at that time, this was two years ago, over 10,000 Soka Gakkais. Now that is the elite of the Buddhists of Japan. Uh, in that six months after she and her dad were gloriously converted, over 10,500 Soka Gakkais have come to the Lord. So there is definitely uh, a crossroads, a valley of decision taking place in Japan. And, and I hope that any missionaries or Christian workers or people that have had a vision and intercessors for Japan are hearing this because I hope that they're realizing their prayers and intercessions and support of missions and, and the work in Japan is finally beginning to pay off after over 60, 70 years of missionaries after the war. Henry, are, are there some missionary groups working in Japan that you, that you would endorse and recommend? Yes, uh, there are some I would definitely recommend that are, are tremendous people. Uh, Tremendous people. Uh, there are those that I definitely would not recommend. I've stayed with some, and uh, they have no more vision for, for Japan than the comfort that they live in. But uh, there are those that weep and are broken and are very dedicated, absolutely. Good. I'll, t I'll talk to you about it later because I, I, I want to make sure that we're helping the right missionaries uh, who are risking their lives right now in Japan for the cause of Jesus Christ. Henry, going back to what I said in the, in the introduction, um, that True News held a, a, a private closed-door conference of watchmen last April. And, uh, you know, we wanted to hear, we wanted to hear what the men are hearing privately in their prayer closet. Uh, what they have not even dared to say publicly, because we all know there are times that we hear things from the Lord, and it's so stunning that it takes you a long, long time to get to the place where you can speak it openly and tell the people, this is what I'm really hearing. 
I believe the consensus, and, and I can't speak for every single person, I'm speaking in generalities, but the consensus was from all these men who have spent many, many years preaching repentance and warning, the, the general consensus was the time of warning for the United States of America has come to an end. Almost all of the men said privately they feel that the Holy Spirit is preparing them for major changes in their ministries, uh, telling them to to begin preparing to shut down their present day ministries of warning, not not to go into hiding, not to go you know to stop preaching, but to make a transition to a new type of ministry. What are your thoughts? What what are you hearing from the Lord right now in 2012? Well, if I would have been in that meeting. I would have emphasized my first Russian invasion presentation. And then, of course, I, the, the second one I called Russian Invasion 2. It isn't two invasions, but it's just simply an update. And then Globalism, the Invasions. And uh, those visions that I saw, if you'll remember, Rick, uh, when I first saw the nuclear attack on the United States of America from east and west coast, first hitting New York City, then hitting over in the Seattle Bellevue area, and then all around the coast, all the way to between Tampa and uh, and Miami, Florida. Uh, before those nuclear blasts hit, those those missiles flew from those submarines. Uh, Remember what I saw. I thought it was uh, radio towers coming up out of the ground, mm-hmm. popping up all over America. And I described them perfectly back then. This was in 1986. December the 14th, 1986 is when I saw this. Uh, I described them. They were the crisscrossing towers that go up, look like radio towers that towered into the heavens. And the dotted lines were going out, and all of a sudden, they sprinkled to the ground like dust, and, I, and great alarm came upon me there in Carnarvon Castle, northern Wales, where Charles was coronated as the Prince of Wales. That's the very castle he was coronated as the Prince of Wales by the Queen. But uh, I have come to realize that the words that I have given was given there on that castle, Lord, if this is not happening, what will be the sign of it and of its time? And the Lord said to me, when Russia opens its gates and lets its masses go, the free world will occupy themselves with transporting, housing, and caring for the masses and will begin letting their weapons down, crying peace and safety. And that's when it will happen. Well, I think we have gone all the way through that scenario now. Uh, The towers shooting up into the heavens, I realize now I've just come from a journey all the way to Maine, crisscrossing the eastern states up into the New England states, and the towers are from there all the way up into Maine. But they're cell phone towers, aren't they? And they just keep springing up out of the earth all over. Every week there are new towers being put up. So it was cell phone towers that I was seeing. And when we hit Desert Storm, when President Senior President Bush said, let the storm begin, we exploded a device over Iraq that knocked out the solid-state electronics called EMF. You're familiar with that, I know. Yes. Mm -hmm. That... That knocked out all the, all the solid-state electronics. And that's what will happen over America. They will, they will explode a device over America. Russia and America are the only two that have that technology. I learned this since that day of 1986. All of the events that have occurred have occurred now enough that I know now that we are at the threshold in America of of a very dangerous time. And I believe that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me while I was uh, in Japan crying out to the Lord and seeking the Lord this year. He said, <clears throat> May, June, and July this year, I really believe he spoke to me and said, will determine in my church 
who will be the goat or the sheep. For I have to bring out the true goat spirit in those that are compromising and those that wish to join together in the theology of the World Council of Churches and the World Church, World Religion. And uh, I believe what we have come up here now is where the lines are being drawn and the way people are responding to the Lord in these days and hours now, in this month and next month, will determine their true spirit. And we're seeing it more and more. I have met with different denominational leaders now, even in these past two months that I've been out there. And uh, I have met with leaders over in, over in Japan. I have talked to a leader in, uh, in Great Britain just the other day. And uh, there is just great consternation. There is great distress in, in the denominational circles because there is such tremendous compromise. They are saying we can't beat them, we've got to join them. Uh, a very, it, it, it's just so disturbing to me to see what is occurring right before our eyes. I mean, the very man that wrote, you know, uh, oh, the famous book, uh, uh, Purpose Driven Life, Rick Warren. Yes, mm-hmm. Now he, he is starting a new movement called Chrislam. And there are those starting the movements that are joining together and are, are welcoming, throwing the welcoming mat out to those that are lesbians and homosexuals and saying, you're welcome to come. We will not speak against you. We will not come against you. Come and fellowship with us. Henry, I want to go back to what you just said a few minutes ago about May, June, and July. And, and you and I have not had a conversation for a long, long time. So uh, you don't know what the Lord spoke to me in the first week of May. And what I was, I was fasting that week, and he said, the fate of many people will be decided. The fate of many people will be sealed over the next 90 days. Oh, my. There it is again. He said, some will make wise decisions, others will make unwise decisions. Some will make right decisions, others will make wrong decisions. But the fate of many people will be sealed over the next 90 days. I wrote it down in my prayer journal, and I've shared it privately with people. I think I've said it a few times on the radio, That, but this was for May, June, and July. In there fact, I know I said it on the radio because I, 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 I told this audience you're going to have to make major life decisions and have it done by the end of July. Yes. I believe that, Rick. So, I, I so, really believe that. I tremble. I tremble within myself to say it, but I believe it with all my heart. So, so the Holy Spirit told you that in May, June, and July will determine who will be the goats and who will be the sheep and that he's going to bring out the goat, he's going to reveal the goat spirit that's in people. Yes. Now, you're talk, he was talking about the people in the church, wasn't he? Absolutely. It's the body of Christ, as we call it. It's the church, as we call it. So he's going to, he's going to separate goats and sheep. Can, can you elaborate on this, what this means? Well, yes, I believe I can. Um, it is astounding the number of people that, uh, that do not really want to believe in the validity of the Word of God anymore. They just, they are not, how, how do I know? How do you know as a listener if you genuinely are trusting in the Word of God as the infallible Word of God? Here, here's the only way I can help you to understand where you are. You need to understand where you are, all right? A financial emergency. What do you do? Do you run to the loaning institution, or do you get on your knees? Who do you go to first? You're diagnosed with a, a, a serious illness. Who do you run to when you begin to be sick and ill? Who do you go to first, the doctor, or do you get on your knees and, and open the Word of God and see what God says in Isaiah 53? 
You see what I mean? When you hear of fearful things happening, like right in your street or right in your little town or your big town or you just missed it by seconds, uh, uh, shootings and, and massacres that are taking place, uh, these disasters that are occurring, your house is in danger right now in one of five states that are on fire right now. Uh, what do you do? What is the first thing you do? Do you call 911? Do you say, what do I do? Or do you call on the Lord? Uh, the scripture says the floods will not overflow you. The flames will not kindle upon you. If any deadly thing bites you, it won't hurt you. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Where is your faith? Where is your confidence? This is what's separating the sheep from the goats, the ones. Now, the goats, we've got to remember, are going to exalt themselves more and more in these last three months. They're going to get up higher and higher. What do I mean? A goat always seeks the highest place on the... In, in, in the pasture or in the mountainside. Mountain goats are famous for taking the highest precipice. And so the goat spirit will exalt itself. It will, it will puff itself up more and more. And as the scripture says, pride goes before destruction and the haughty spirit before the fall. So I believe we're going to begin to see ministers Ministers and prophets that call themselves prophets. I have had so many calls come to me in the last few months of prophets that are prophesying things that are going to happen within so many hours, and they don't happen. What do you do when a prophet says, Thus saith the Lord, this is going to happen on this day and by this hour, and it doesn't happen? They are a false prophet. Why should we as Christians keep listening to these that call themselves prophets and are like the wind, the clouds that deliver no rain? That's the difference between sheep and goats, Rick. Yes, the, the integrity of, of God's Word is at the heart of our walk with Him. Absolutely. It must always be. Do you believe God's Word, and do you believe God will honor and perform his word. That's the decision every single Christian must make at some point in his or her life. The very first thing Satan did in the Garden of Eden, it wasn't the temptation of Eve. It was it was saying, hath God said. That's right. He could not tempt Adam and Eve until he first got them to doubt the integrity of God's word. So this is this is the core issue for every Christian. Do you believe that the word of God is truly the holy word given by the Holy Spirit to the human race? Do you believe it is without error? Do you believe that God will perform his word? Do you believe that he is the same God as he was 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 years ago. Will he do for you what he did for Abraham? Will he do for you what he did for Moses? Will he do for you what he did for Paul and Peter? This is the issue that every one of us must decide. And as as you say, Henry, there are many people, influential people in the church today who really don't believe it. That's right. That's right. They're even frustrated and saying, oh, I'm so tired of hearing Israel, Israel, Israel. They, they, don't, they don't listen to the word of God. They don't listen to like Zechariah chapter 2, verse 8. For he, he, will, he says, I will destroy the nations that spoiled you. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. In verse 12 he says, And the Lord shall inherit Judah, his portion, in the Holy Land, and shall choose Jerusalem again. They don't even believe in that one. Right under their noses, what we've just said about Japan, right under their noses, Japan believes it. Those pagan people, the the, the Buddhists of Japan believe it. Why do not Christians believe the validity of God's word? Henry, we, we have watched events in the world build up and then subside 
I'm talking about with the focus on Jerusalem and Israel. I, I, I have watched this over the years where it has looked like, okay, there's a lot of ships, you know, in, 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 in the Mediterranean. There's a lot of ships in the in the Persian Gulf. This thing is building up. The, the, oh, yeah. This thing's going to erupt. But then it would it would cool down. That's right. But this year seems different. Is Are we headed towards that clash this year? I'll tell you, brother. Uh, you know, there's a miracle. You've heard of my little book called uh, The Rebirth of Judah versus The Church Glorious? Mm-hmm. Have you heard of that book? I've heard of it. I don't have it. Oh, boy, I need to get you that book. Give me your address when we're done, and I'll send it to you. Okay. But uh, it's in the hands of all the leaders of Israel right now. It was personally delivered by a man representing the United States. I, I'm not at liberty to give his name or his position. But he bought a whole 104 of them and came and personally delivered them into the hands of everyone. That book has so shaken the leaders of Israel that he said it is causing a whole new spirit to come up in the leaders of Israel, and it is resurfacing a new strength and a new boldness in Israel. But in that book, I talk about Ariel Sharon, the Lion of God, you know, and I mm-hmm. call him the Old Lion of Genesis 49. Rick, Ariel has been moved out to his ranch. He's still alive. Do you realize how many years he's been in a coma? I know. But he is communicating. Are you aware of that? No, I did not. I, I, I've, I've often wondered if he died years ago and they simply didn't announce it. No, he's kept very secret. He's communicating. I know this from this man who is a very close friend of his, his firstborn son, Ariel's firstborn son. And he noticed that Ariel was communicating, was following with his eyes when he came into the room, following him. So he talked to him and took his hand, Ariel's right hand, and said, Dad, if you know who I am, then I'm going to name three names, or three people. If it's no, squeeze two times, if you can. If it's yes, squeeze once. He asked two different people, and then he said, Am I your son? And named him. And Ariel squeezed his hand once, very firmly. He realized Ariel could communicate. The old lion of Genesis 49, he's like that. I won't say, Thus saith the Lord, he is the old lion mm-hmm. of Genesis 49. But I know that Jacob said, That I may be tell you, Come, my sons, and gather together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. And Judah is called the old lion. Now, I have theologians on my back saying, Jesus is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Absolutely, you're right. But Jesus is never, never, never been called the old lion. He is the lion. He is the lion that was cut off before his time. See what I mean? Yes. Mm -hmm. But Ariel Sharon is communicating now with the Knesset and the people, the leaders of Japan. And God has got something stirring here, and, Gen- and, and Zechariah chapter 12, I believe we are at the threshold of Zechariah 12 breaking loose. People think Jesus is ready to come and touch on the Mount of Olives at any second, and that mountain will split to the right and the left, right? That's, that's Zechariah 14. But Zechariah 12 has to be fulfilled first that the feeblest of them, the governors of Judah, will be as David, and those that are as David in that day will be as God, and they will go forth and utterly destroy on the right hand and on the left. And so I believe in this whole scenario we're talking about, Israel is the natural, Israel is the carnal, is the fleshly part, and 1 Corinthians 15, 46, I think it's 1 Corinthians, uh, says that which was first was not spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward that which is spiritual. And so what we're looking at with Israel and Judah, I just talked to a person that came back from a, a tour in Israel, and she told me just on this trip, she said, I asked my, my tour guide, what tribe are you of? And he said, I am of Judah. And he said, Most of us in Israel are of Judah. 
do you know much about the other tribes? And the lady said, no, I don't. He said, well, we don't know where a lot of the other tribes are, but we know most of us are of Judah. So we're looking at a time when God is bringing them back and his covenant with Judah, who was always chosen by the Spirit of God to be the first to go out to do battle. And so we're, we're in a scenario now where we must watch carefully Israel. And Israel is at a, is at a point where in your, your introduction there, Rick, you're talking about how the nations are provoking Israel. You've got to go do this. You've got to go do it. Henry, um, we, we know Scripture talks about Jerusalem and God's protection of the city of Jerusalem, but it doesn't mention Tel Aviv. And Tel Aviv has become recognized officially as the homosexual capital of the world. I know. Are you expecting that Tel Aviv may suffer great loss in this clash that is coming between the nations? Yes. Uh, you know, Ezekiel said, Woe unto the coastlands in that day. That's, I'm glad you, that's the scripture I was going to bring up. I, I am greatly concerned about Tel Aviv. Yes. And, and you know why this has to happen, Rick? It's happening, how you've noticed the, the homosexual lesbian population predominantly along the coastlands of America as well. Mm -hmm. And Australia. Australia as well. And so God is gathering these there. He's gathering them. And he says in, in, in Ezekiel, the day will come when you will look for them. And in Psalms 37, you will look for them and they will be ashes under your feet. And so God is gathering the wicked to the coastal areas. I believe God, like even California, he has been pleading and pleading with the Christians of California. Get out of these coastal areas. Get away from these coastal areas. There is grave danger. But no, they're not listening. And so he is gathering them to these areas that are marked for destruction. And they're going to be ashes under our feet or sucked into the sea, and it will be the end of it. Uh, several, about a month or two ago, the, the Israeli intelligence website, DEPCA, reported that in Israeli war strategists are concerned that the Iranians are going to detonate a nuclear device in the Mediterranean in order to generate a tsunami wave that would wash over Tel Aviv. Ah, well. So this speculation, this is not, this is not, uh, we're not talking about conspiracy theories or sci-fi stuff here. These are discussions that are actually in the Israeli press, the possibility of a, of a man-made generated tsunami coming over the city of Tel Aviv. And the scripture says, uh, woe to the, to the cities of the coastland. Yes, yes. So I have been saying on this radio program to the Christians in Tel Aviv, get out. Get out of Tel Aviv now. If you're yeah. living in Tel Aviv, get out, flee now. Amen. Um, Henry, in all these years since you, you had your visions in the 80s, have you ever seen the conditions in the world so ripe for these visions to take place? No, I really haven't. Not in my lifetime. And I'm, I'm in my 51st year of ministry now. And I, I, I can truly say that with all my heart. I, I, I have never seen I have never seen things coming together so very quickly. Uh, it just uh, oh my goodness. Uh, uh, look at here, look at global the global peace summit. Uh, at the Council of World Religious Leaders and all white in, in the year two thousand. Mm hmm. Uh, the Millennium Development Goals. Here was their goals. All nations, a plan for world wealth and wealth redistribution. What is Obama saying? Same thing. Uh, Tony Blair brought out, who was converted to Catholicism, 
Faith to Faith, quote, Blair and Bill Clinton, Clinton stated, every high school student with a computer or iPage or whatever you want to call it, linking students to world religion, to two major religions, Christianity and Islam. Much is being written. Well, in uh, Beast of Revelation 13, the Red Socialist Government, wealth redistribution. Revelation 17, the woman riding on the back of the beast. The woman is a type of the church. Think about it. In Judges, chapter 2, verse 17, or the harlot church, backslidden Christianity and world religion people. It's coming together so quickly now. The compromise, we're right, we can't get away from it, can we, Rick? We can't get away from, from the fact of the compromise of sheep versus goats, or this is the time of make your choice, make your decision, because the decision you choose, the choice you make now, you will have to live by it. And what we're seeing in, in different sectors of, of the world, in the economy, the situation is deteriorating rapidly. In the Middle East, yes. it's, it's, it's deteriorating rapidly. Um, the Fukushima situation is deteriorating. It, it, and it seems like in recent months, everything, the, the deterioration is accelerating. I monitor the comments of of very wealthy, influential investors, and I go to various websites where they are speaking openly. and And in the last several months, particularly in the last several weeks, yes, I have never ever read comments from men who are controlling fifty, sixty, eighty, a hundred billion dollars in investment funds, openly talking about the implosion of the global financial system. Yes. Yes. Do you know, Rick, I I was just watching uh, on 60 Minutes the other night. I think it was 60 Minutes, yeah, or 2020, one or the other. Occasionally I'll plug into them if I get a chance. And they had Warren Buffett on, speaking of world globalists, you Mm -hmm. know. And uh, they had him on, and to my utter amazement, They had his son on, and his son is the president of his big organization, but his his executive board, his son is really under the decisions made by the executive board, and of course, uh, Bill Gates is is the man that, and his organization that has been given in the will of Warren Buffett of his billions. Now... The thing that astounded me in that presentation and blessed my socks off, <laughs> I called my wife, honey, you got to come watch this. Warren Buffett's son, they showed at the last segment what he's doing. He's just a loving, simple farmer. He, oh, yes, he owns 1,500 acres that he farms, but his heart is just simply in farming. But then they showed him spending so many million every year in Africa and in South America, teaching them to farm, and guess what he's teaching them to use? Original seed. That's a surprise. That, that's what I mean by knock my socks off. He made the statement, what I am teaching the people of South America and Africa When all the other farmers are starving to death, they will have food. That's why I'm teaching them. Now think about that, Rick. Think about that. Uh, God, right in the middle of this, has placed some people with some good sense in their head. mm -hmm. I, I just pray for him. I pray for Warren Buffett's son. I pray for his safety. I pray for his blessings. He may not be a Christian, he may be an atheist or whatever, but I sure pray that God will bless him because it was showing him how to farm, how to how to irrigate, and how to sift the seed and save the original seed that will produce after its kind every year. Henry, we have about four minutes remaining. Uh, obviously, none of us know when Jesus Christ will return, 
So I'm, I'm asking a very open, general question here, but personally, are, 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 you, are you anticipating that his return is really close on the horizon, I mean, within a few years, or, or do you think that there are perhaps decades of things that have to happen before his return? Well, I, I look at what, we, what you started with in your introduction today. Uh, I look very closely at that, and I watch Israel. I, I can't get away from Israel as the natural for the, spirits, the, uh, the church being the spiritual. And the church looks like right now it's just half asleep and, uh, and just lazy and settled back and too comfortable. Israel is at a place that it cannot be. Israel it is a place where its annihilation is inevitable if it doesn't make a move in, in their thinking. And But Israel, one thing about them, they're holding to Jerusalem, as Netanyahu said to Obama last August, we will never give up Jerusalem. And uh, I'm watching that like a hawk, Rick. And to me, when the natural Israel becomes mighty and breaks loose and fulfills Zechariah chapter 12, chapter 13 is strictly the mourning and the recovery of them and the preparation of their hearts so God, Jesus, can come in Zechariah 14 and set his foot on the Mount of Olives. Somewhere in there, I believe, will be the catching away of the church. And so I, I'm not looking at anything but that. That is my timekeeper. That is my indicator that I'm watching like a hawk. Mm-hmm. And in the days ahead, as, as these situations uh, continue to uh, to accelerate and and the the quality of life changes of, on this planet from what we've known most of our lives. What must our listeners do spiritually in order to to get through this time and to finish their race victoriously? I'm, you've got one minute to answer that question. Okay, Rick. Uh, people are saying store up food and water and all. Uh, but listen, people, God promises... He will give us that hidden manna. He promises that our waters shall be pure. Our place of munitions shall be the rocks. Get your eyes first and foremost on the Lord. The Lord clearly said, He that seeketh to save his life will lose his life, but he or she that will give their life for my sake will have it. Don't seek to save your life. Get in the, in, the, in the limelight and get in there and be willing to lose your life for the righteousness' sake. And you will not have anything to worry about. The worst thing they can do, the most they can do is take your life. But all that does is promote you right onto the streets of glory before the Lord. What's wrong with that? Hallelujah. We have no continuing city here. We have no final dwelling place. So be encouraged, all right? Praise God. And perfect timing. There is the closing music. My guest... Prayer Walker to the World, Henry Groover. His website is JoyfulSoundMinistries.com. If you do not know Jesus Christ, if you've been listening to this program and you realize you're not ready, you are not spiritually ready for these things to happen, then Henry and I invite you to make it right with the Creator of the universe the creator of your soul, almighty God, Yahweh, the God of Israel. And the way you do that is to confess to him that you have broken his commandments and you deserve punishment, but you accept the the, the forgiveness of your sins that he made possible through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ. If you will believe on the name of Jesus Christ, the Bible says you shall be saved. And that's the issue. Do you believe God? Make that decision today.